here, like in Missouri. All right, I was born in here in Missouri to a Mexican mother and a Azerbaijani dad. I grew up in Missouri since I was very little. And um, like I went to like the six year med program at UMKC. Uh, so I've been in Missouri for my entire life until now. Now I'm in this Minnesota. I don't know how many of you guys have heard of Azerbaijan, but I always feel that uh, letting people know where it is kind of gives you a little bit more of the context. So Azerbaijan, um, my dad was from Sumgait, which is very close to Baku. And uh, Azerbaijan itself is like very near Turkey, Russia, was part of the USSR um, prior to its you know, disbandment and um, all that fun stuff. And I thought, you know, telling you a little bit more about my story about why medicine, why surgery for me would be important. Um, so if you look uh, here in the first picture, my dad it was a doctor back in Azerbaijan before, you know, he moved over here uh, into Missouri, surprisingly, middle of the country. Um, and he himself has been such a very pivotal part in, you know, my decision to, to go into medicine and to research, um, make, you know, different uh, programs in high school, um, volunteering at a different hospital, and um, such that uh, I applied and got into the six-year med program, and it was pretty much set from there. But the reason why I chose surgery was because of my mom. Um, she's from Mexico, and a lot of my patient, you know, care in Missouri has been with, you know, Latino patients, Hispanic patients, and being able to utilize my Spanish and making better connections with them. Um, has been something that was critical in my decision to go into surgery, as well as, you know, when I was growing up with her, uh, I was with my abuelita and they were seamstresses. So my first rotation being surgery, going into a case and realizing, oh, this actually seems pretty familiar. I feel like, you know, there's not much difference between skin and fabric. So here's pictures of my family. That, that's my abuelita in the top left corner. Uh, she's very pretty. Top right corner is my nana, my dad's side of the family. Uh, we went to Minnehaha Falls when we first came in. So that's my family bottom left. And then bottom right, that's my sister Zarifa. And then that's my cousin Anar. They were supposed to come to Minnehaha, but then they decided to go to Japan instead. So I was like, all right, I guess you guys don't want to come visit me. They had, they had a blast. And this is my sister. I think uh, she really wanted me to put this slide. She's 12 years old. And uh, her hobby now is photography. Uh, and not just, you know, simple photography, but the photography that you see here. She also really, really enjoys videos. And all of her videos are just interesting. Reference A, B, C, D, E. I just wanted to talk about, you know, medical school interests and how big, you know, being Hispanic has been. Um, I'm also very interested in mentorship and research. Um, I really like teaching. I feel like to get to where I am right now, I required a lot of teaching, a lot of mentorship, a lot of, you know, guidance in what I'm doing, how I'm doing things. Um, and I feel that that transition me very well from, you know, very beginning of medical school, years one and two, which is like undergrad, and then years four for um, medical school. So I always want to give back, whether it's, you know, me helping the other med students that still in the six year med program or me here, you know, building these mentorship relationships with higher upper years. And um, yeah, more pictures, more pictures. Like, well, I wanted to talk about my hobbies. So another thing is like, I'm very crafty. I'm not a very outdoors person, which I learned that it's very, you know, rare here, <laughs> kind of unfortunate, but I'm, I'm more of a, you know, introverted indoor kind of person. So anything you could do indoors, I have done probably. So I've made jewelry. 
that was the thing that I got into after, you know, submitting my applications and realizing, oh crap, I have to wait this long to realize whether or not I have interviews. What shall I do now? So you could see, you know, a couple of my things that I've painted and made out of clay and resin and painted a Bulbasaur and all that stuff. And then I was told to explain why Minnesota. So what I thought was very interesting was just your patient population. The fact that, you know, you have a lot of um, minorities here, especially Hispanics and just location being where you guys are and, you know, academic medicine wise with your emphasis on research and um, just, you know, I felt that I vibed and decided to apply, shoot my shot as they say. Uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about too was research itself. Um, I wanted to talk about this research that I'm currently interested in and hoping to find someone to talk about with, uh, specifically about, you know, women in medical situations and their pain control and how, you know, typically there's procedures that are done without anesthesia, um, usually just local, and um, people find it very painful. So like IUD insertion um, as one example. It is still brewing. It is something that I see and I haven't really found any associated research with that. So I'm laying it out in the open. Thanks. Come on, Mili. I can take questions at this time. Hi everyone, my name is Mili Patel and Mili actually means to meet someone. So it's nice to meet you all. This is a picture of me and my family from graduation. So I grew up in a pretty unique environment in a joint family. So with my parents and my two uncles and two aunts, and then my grandparents moved in with us um, when I was in college. I grew up in Lawrence, Kansas. The first picture is of me and my younger aunt, my mom and my older aunt. And the second picture is very important because you'll see my oldest uncle in a Dunkin' Donuts shirt. So it was three brothers that moved from India and started a business in Lawrence of Dunkin'. So if you're ever in Lawrence, feel free to name drop, you'll get free donuts. <laughs> and then it's my dad. And then it's my younger uncle who taught me how to ride a bike and also how to drive a car. And then it's my dad again, we're in India. Um, my brothers and I are holding sugar cane and then it's my cousins in the front. I went to KU for undergrad in Lawrence and then I moved to Kansas City uh, for medical school at KU. The first picture is of me and my family at my white coat ceremony at home during COVID times. And then it's me and my friends celebrating graduation at KU. And the third picture is my favorite because we have our biggest Chiefs fan, my grandma. She calls Patrick Mahomes Mohan and she prays for him before every single game. And I would highly recommend watching Super Bowls with her. She'll tell Mohan to throw the ball in Gujarati. So she doesn't know very much English. It's been very rewarding working with the oncology population and I've had a lot of exposure to different aspects of oncology. I've gotten to be a caregiver for my grandpa, also volunteer um, with Bev, who's a senior volunteer, and Lauren, who's a volunteer coordinator at Lawrence Memorial Hospital, where I was born and raised. And this was from the oncology department. I also presented my research in Florida and the first picture on the right is a picture with my mentor, Dr. Kilgore. She's amazing. She's a breast surgical oncologist, and she also shares interest in education. So I've gotten to work with her in a lot of leadership and teaching medical students as well. So I love to hike. The first picture is uh, me after I hiked up a mountain in Washington after medical school. This is taken in Olympic National Park. 
And that's one of the most diverse national parks I've been to. There's rainforests and beaches and mountains, and it was so much fun. Uh, the second picture on the right is in the desert. So it was in, taken in Sedona with me and my friends. And then I also love to travel. I have a picture of a kite, um, and you can't really see the rest of the kites in the image, but it's from Uttaran in India, which is the kite festival. It happens every January. So everyone goes up on their rooftop and flies kites and tries to take other people's kites down. So it's a lot of fun. And then it's me and my best friend who's wearing the black jewelry. And we're in Kansas City celebrating Navratri, which translates into nine nights. So nine nights of dancing. It's a lot of fun. And then this is what brought me to Minnesota. The first time I came to Minnesota was actually for an ultimate Frisbee tournament. And so I play ultimate Frisbee competitively. So this is a condensed version of the very many reasons why I wanted to come here for residency. And you guys are already making it feel like a home away from home. So thank you. I'm looking forward to learning from all of you. This is, these are some of my favorite people as well. <laughs> okay, so my name's Mitch Rawson and this is my intro. So who is this guy? I am 29 years old. I'm from Milwaukee. I went to Marquette. I studied biomedical engineering. I went to KCU, or I also got my MBA at Rockhurst. I'm a big Packers fan. And these are my hobbies. Thanks. Just kidding. <laughs> so that's just the skinny, like, who is this random guy who's up here talking to you? So growing up, I know not everyone is from here, so I put a little map up of that's where Milwaukee is, in case you're wondering, that's the flag. First time I've ever seen that flag, I don't think it's ever flown. Uh, there's me when I'm not being an absolute menace as a child. And uh, I have one older brother, Nick. He does uh, accounting and finance. And then <laughs> you don't really know someone until you know them, what they look like in their awkward stage. So this is me in all my glory horizontal stripes, a haircut that my dad gave me in my garage. So just a great picture. It was soak it in. You'll never see it again. That's me after I graduated from Marquette. That was a pretty big day for me. Uh, my brother was the first person to graduate from college in our family. So it was a pretty big deal. And it was pretty fun that day. And then uh, we were told to kind of discuss like what got us into medicine. And I actually took a surgical mission trip to Antigua, Guatemala, where I was just an undergrad and everyone had already had their either nurses, doctors, and uh, anesthetists, et cetera. And I was like this outsider, but they kind of took me in as a family. We woke up early, operated all day, and then had these family dinners at night with people that worked at the hospital, people that we operated on and with. And it was just a really like magical experience. It was, I think it was 12 days there total. And it was my first time in um, Central America. So that was pretty cool. And that's ultimately when I decided why that I'm going to be in medicine and that I want to be a surgeon. And then so during my undergraduate years and in my gap years, I worked at a few different companies, one of them being Medtronic. So while I was at Marquette, I uh, did the co-op program where I worked with some pretty interesting technology like the Micra and Link uh, pacemakers and heart monitors. And I was a systems engineer for them. So that was pretty interesting. At the time that I left the company, it was at 80,000. My next company was uh, at next turn and I was a quality engineer and they had 80 people. So a 1000 X decrease in uh, employees. That was a pretty interesting jump. And then dealing with quality engineering, you're pretty much no one's friend and everyone hates to see you walk down the hallway because you're gonna scold them or tell them to do something. Uh, so that was a really good growth experience. I actually really liked the job and uh, still talk to the people there today. And then I worked in a, a couple different emergency rooms as a medical scribe and that was a great experience. One of them was at one of the only psych hospitals in Milwaukee. So that was interesting. Another one was like a level one trauma center. So I just saw a good breadth of medicine there. And that really, again, uh, launched me into medicine. 
And here you can see uh, my family in the top left. That's my mom, dad, and my brother. And actually funny, the best question I ever got in an interview is what's the largest animal or mammal you could take down with your hands? And my brother is 6'5 and 320 and I've taken him down before. So that was my answer is my brother. And then I just have my first day of school picture and my last day of medical school picture. And on the lower right is my wife, Molly. And uh, research, I'm currently working with Dr. Harmon on some perioperative VT prophylaxis work. Uh, I was published in a book uh, this May, the metastatic bone disease. Uh, so it's interesting. Then I've also done some poster presentations with a sports clinic out of Tucson, where I have some family out there and worked with some of the docs out there. And it's uh, about concussion care, which I found very interesting over the years. And then during undergrad, I studied a lot of kinematics, being in biomed engineering with a focus on biomechanics. You analyze people's gates a lot. So kind of boring, but also interesting to, to some extent. A lot of data analysis. And this is my wife. On the left is when we uh, when I proposed in the middle is our wedding day. And on the right was when we had like our birth announcement. So she's six months pregnant now, 30 weeks. This is our first baby. Uh, this is our dog, Oxbow. We named him after a bar in Northern Wisconsin that we snowmobiled to. He's pretty much like a piece of furniture. He doesn't move unless you move him. Sleeps 20 hours a day. Uh, his tongue is pretty much always out. And he's 75 pounds. So he's only like this big, but he is... He's thick, he's dense. Uh, we had to, <laughs> recently we had to get a ramp to get him in and out of our car. <laughs> Not because he's crippled or anything, but he's just lacking in the athletic department. And these are some of my hobbies. So I really like to golf. I'm not very good, but I can get a hold of them sometimes. So that's my favorite course. Arizona National in the lower left. Picture of my brother and I before a Packers game. And in the middle and the top right, I, I say I like fishing, but I more so like catching. So I go on fishing trips where you do mostly catching and not as much just looking for the fish. And on the lower right, uh, the first Saturday in May every year is the Kentucky Derby. And we started throwing an annual party for all of our friends and whoever dresses in the most crazy outfit wins a bottle of bourbon. So keep your calendars open for Saturday in May. Um, yeah. And then also you can't come to Minnesota without being in the Minnesota State Fair. So I have family that live here. So I've been to the fair like every year, except for the COVID year when it was closed. And then I've gotten into trap shooting recently. Last time I went, I went 38 of 52 clay. So that was pretty good for me. And then why the U? Well, I have family here. I've worked here. I've lived here. I love Minnesota. I wanted to stay in the Midwest near family. My wife being pregnant now, that was pretty important. And then also my interview, I had a really positive experience. And I've just been talking about the program ever since, kind of like Neely said. So, um, yeah, that's my presentation. Thank you all for having me, and I, I really appreciate it. All right, this is exciting. It's good to meet you. Oh goodness, let me figure this out real quick. <laughs> okay, awesome. So I'm Walter, it's good to meet you guys. I'm super excited to be here and I look forward to meeting you all throughout the year and hopefully this presentation kind of gives you an idea of who I am. So let's jump into it. So I am from Oklahoma. I grew up in a pretty mixed family. My mother's side is Cambodian and my father's side is Scottish and German. And so that's kind of me at the bottom, just me being a, a menace to society. And then my brother, he's 10 years older than me. He's an accountant. And my parents, I called him the Smurf, Mama Smurf and Papa Smurf. So that's them on the top left. And then uh, I went to uh, OU for undergraduate and then also for uh, medical school. And the bottom left, shout out to Jam for hosting one of my birthdays during school. So that was really memorable. And then the bottom right are some of the surgeons through my third and fourth year that were awesome to work with. So why surgery? So I love this question because I think there's a lot of things that a lot of us resonate with. Um, and actually, I actually start on the right side 
uh, with Integris. So after high school, um, I actually didn't go to college immediately. Uh, it took some time to kind of figure some stuff out for myself and I actually started out as a pharmacy technician. And I kind of accumulated five years of that. And I really got to know a lot of the roles in the hospital and kind of, you know, what everyone did and, you know, what sounded cool to me. And I figured out that everything that sounded really cool that I wanted to do required to go to medical school. So naturally I was like, okay, well, I need to figure out that process because I've never had any family that uh, have went to medical school. So it was really cool getting some mentors, getting some guidance. And then eventually I started uh, at a community college over on the far left, which really is where a lot of it started. And so that particular college had uh, a cadaver lab and I'll never forget, um, you know, the human body is absolutely fascinating. And uh, whenever I got to open it up for the first time and just, you know, see what everything's like and learn about it. And it was just amazing you know, getting to hold someone's brain and realize that every single memory this person has ever had is in my hands right now. And then, you know, looking at everyone's organs and saying, you know, why is the heart bigger? Why are there, you know, what is this tumor? How did this get here? And, you know, why are there, you know, these uh, lesions on the phrenic nerve that are just black dots? And it really just sparked a lot of curiosity. And so, uh, naturally, I really wanted to stay in that cadaver lab because dissecting, it felt like, you know, it could be five hours and it felt like 30 minutes. And I thought, this is awesome. So if I could do something where, you know, medicine is joined in with something with my hands and something can seemingly pass by, you know, why not? So uh, fast forward to medical school, um, third year kind of hit me where uh, I remember thinking, Oh, okay, the shelf exam will be, you know, what are we, you know, what do we need to do next in the operation or what sutures do we need? All these things. And I got a slap in the face real quick of, no, how do you work the patient up that needs to go into the OR? Um, and then how do you get them out, you know, safely? And what are the things that you need to look for? And I realized that, you know, this is awesome. I was like, okay, there's, you know, there's the operative aspect and there's also so much more thought that goes behind that and all the decision-making. And so uh, that really kind of helped solidify, you know, why I really wanted to go into surgery. And then the bottom left, to kind of touch on research, uh, mainly case presentations. And then also um, I really got involved with anatomy. So I stayed with it for over eight years. And during COVID, we had a pilot project um, where we were trying to figure out how to teach anatomy for medical schools and PA schools um, across the country and try to do like an online format and also like a half in-person format. So why UMN? So, uh, so Jam really hyped this place up. Uh, really talked about how awesome the people are here, the environment, um, the exposure, and then also during the interview trail. Um, you know, sometimes with online um, interviews, it's kind of hard to get like a genuine uh, feel for it, but it felt like this was the one place that actually felt genuine just through the whole process. And then the quality of training and exposure, it just seems like there's a lot of, things that are constantly going on and new things. And, uh, you know, even being on service right now, it just feels like every other patient is a step one, step two question. So it's awesome. Research opportunities. Um, I think to me, it'd be, it would be a no brainer to take uh, some research years. And so some areas of interest would be cardiothoracic, trauma, ACS, and global surgery. And then, so some fun things. I just like loaded this up because pictures always tell a lot about, you know, life. And so kind of starting on the top left, um, I absolutely loved wrestling. That was my first passion. Um, I almost qualified for the Junior Olympics until I got choked out in the finals. And like any normal person that looked up at the roof when they woke up was questioning themselves and their life decisions. So um, after that, uh, I actually got into bagpiping. And uh, that is just an amazing instrument to me it is this like haunting and chilling instrument that has this like beautiful resonating type of vibe to it and i absolutely love it although i would say i'm still more of an amateur but if you do hear pipes on campus i might be playing them so uh the next thing is uh, i love cooking um my grandmother actually used to cook for the king in cambodia and uh, she looked at me and she was like, you need to learn because no one else in our family is going to do it. And I'm getting arthritis. So she had some cool recipes. And hopefully during points in this year, I'll get to kind 
kind of share that with everybody. I, I love cooking and I love sharing that part of my uh, culture as well. And then the rest of these pictures, more or less, uh, I took the advice from many people of if you have the free time, um, decompress, go do something fun before residency starts. And so I got to travel a lot. I went to about three or four different uh, countries internationally and two or three uh, places in the US as well. And uh, really the compilation of this um, is more that uh, I really love getting to know people. I think it's awesome. Everyone to, to me uh, has a documentary. And if there's something that I think uh, as physicians is really getting to know people and you know, getting to travel, getting to get to know other people around the world, different cultures, it's a very enriching experience. And you know, also getting to do activities and just share wonderful moments with people. So for me, that is uh, definitely a hobby I would like to continue in the future. And I took everyone's advice to go travel, be free a little bit before residency starts. And that's what I got. All right, so uh, you just have to sit through one more. So let's get through this together. Okay, so uh, hello, hi, and what's the crack? So I'm Solve, uh, Solve Svensson. My name is pronounced Solve, the G is silent. It's confusing. If you pronounce the G, I'm not gonna hold it against you. Um, I am the real track uh, resident for this year. So just a little bit about me. I was born and raised here in Minnesota. But for the last six years, I've lived outside of the U.S. more than I've actually lived in the U.S. So I lived abroad in Copenhagen for a little under like a year and a half. And then I also did medical school in Dublin, Ireland. And I was trying to think of a way to kind of sum up my interests and my path through medicine and how even after being like living abroad in other countries, I ended up wanting to do rural medicine rural surgery here in Minnesota. And um, the theme that I kind of came back to was the idea of community. So uh, community is something that I value a lot. Um, I grew up here in Minnesota. I'm really close with both sides of my extended family. Growing up, most of my summers, I either spent up north with my family. So uh, unfortunately for my husband, both sides of my family are uh, coordinated t-shirt families for vacation. So he's had to adjust to that. Um, so up north, my grandparents used to take us for Graham and Gramp camp every summer where they would take all the cousins and we would have themed camps. Um, it was a little bit over the top, but that's kind of the, the family that I came from. And then on the other side of the family, family um, is Southern Minnesota down in Tyler, Minnesota, um, where my dad is from. I think their population just broke a thousand. So way to go. They still haven't gotten a stoplight, but I think we're getting there. Um, and so we would spend the, the summer down there as well, doing Able Skiver days and Danish camp and everything. So I have, I'm very close with my family and my family's also recently grown as well. Um, I got married on May 18th to my husband, Mac, and I now have a Canadian family as well. So I think that there's a lot of forms of community that I've been involved in. There's my family, there's friends, there's teams. Um, and I think all of that actually really applies here in residency in the, the community that uh, is cultivated here uh, in the general surgery program. So growing up, I was involved with a lot of different activities. I danced ballet from the age of three. I did seven years on point. Um, I was also involved in show choir and theater in high school. And then in college, I took a 180 and joined rugby. And so I played rugby for five years. And then uh, after a couple of knee injuries, I decided to kind of slow down, go from high speed collision to low speed collision. So then I joined jujitsu. Um, so a lot of variety with the activities that I've been involved in. Um, but one thing I think that kind of links all of them is they're sort of activities where you have to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. 
Um, it's not fun to be on point standing on the tops of your toes for, you know, an hour at a time. It's uh, really awkward to mess up a line when you're on stage and have to recover from that. It's really uncomfortable to be at the bottom of a ruck with five girls like piled on top of you with cleats on. And it's really not comfortable to have someone trying to kill you. Uh, so <laughs> all of that, I think what I learned most from all of that is the importance of remaining calm, going back to your basics and trusting the technique and the training that you have. And I think that that's something that kind of made me lean towards um, the University of Minnesota and the education that I could get here with the surgery program. So, oh, also uh, just, uh, I met my husband at jujitsu actually. Uh, so now we joke and say that jujitsu training is our couples counseling. Uh, so, so my actual pathway here. So I knew that I wanted to go into medicine um, even back in high school, but I wanted to do a gap year. And I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do for my gap year, but I wanted to do something that was involved in medicine, but still maybe outside of my comfort zone. Um, I had studied abroad in Denmark and I knew that they um, hired people from the States. So on a whim, I applied for a program assistant position in their health and science department, and I got the job. So about a month after graduating from college, I moved to Denmark. And so uh, Denmark was one of the best experiences that I have. I, um, there is really something to say about moving to a new country and the culture shift that you get. Um, it's weird trying to open a bank account in another country. It's weird going to the grocery store and not knowing what anything is and sitting there with your phone and translating all the ingredients because you have no idea what they are um, and your Danish is not that great. Um, so I really grew in Denmark. So up in the top corner is my host parents from when I was a student. Um, I would visit them all the time when I was living in Copenhagen. They basically become another set of grandparents for me. They came to my wedding. Um, that's me and my mom there in Newhound. Um, I embraced Danish culture. So I was biking to work every day. I was going on sea swims and I learned passable Danish. I also grew really cr close with my community that I had in my office that I worked in. So we had a pretty multicultural um, office. And that was kind of a fun experience of learning how to work with people and everyone has a different approach to problem solving and you have to kind of learn to work with them. Um, one of my uh, crowning experiences there was actually, uh, I got to meet Bill Nye, um, that was entirely on accident. And I also kind of consider it to be one of my most embarrassing moments uh, just because of how much I freaked out, uh, but I can give that story another day. So anyways, when I was living in Denmark, the program that I was involved in involved uh, working with doctors that were practicing medicine. And I learned a lot about the Danish healthcare system and kind of the approach for uni universal healthcare systems, where there's a strong focus on patient histories, physical exams, um, just because the X-ray or you know CT and imaging or some of the labs are not always as readily available. So you have to kind of do, take a good history. You have to do a good physical exam, start treating empirically, and then narrow down from that. Um, so I thought, and that I, that was something that I was kind of interested in when I for my education in medicine. Um, so when I applied to medical school, I also applied abroad, and that is how I ended up in Ireland. So I moved to Ireland uh, 2020, which was the start of the, or the middle of the COVID pandemic. Um, everything was closed down for my first year. I wasn't allowed to leave a five kilometer radius. But uh, once everything opened back up, I was able to actually hit the ground running and really get involved with my community there. At UCD, I became involved in the surgical skills um, society or the surgical society where I helped lead clinical skills. Um, I found that I really enjoy education and trying to teach. I think that we learn ourselves as we teach someone else and it improves our own knowledge as we teach. Um, I played some very competitive tag rugby with my uh, class and I did some traveling as well. And then I also volunteered when I was in Ireland. Um, one of the most influential experiences I had was volunteering with St. Vincent de Paul Homeless Outreach. And I learned just kind of the impact it can have on someone's day to just like remember how they take their tea. Even if you only see them once a week and just acknowledge that you know them, you remember them, 
Um, it means a lot to people. And so that's something that I've kind of carried with me and something that I'd like to bring into practice. So all of that sum up, why surgery and why the rural track? So I could give like the classic answer of why surgery because I didn't want to do anything else. Um, but truly the thing that tipped the scales for me was my rural rotation when I was in Ireland. I really liked um, the approach to surgery in community hospitals where what comes in the door is what you have to do on that day. And you kind of, you're a jack of all trades, master of none necessarily, but um, you really learn how to handle anything that gets thrown your way and manage patient care as best as you can, even with limited resources. Um, and so that kind of, to me, directed me towards the rural programs that were available here in the States. Within surgery, like I mentioned, I'm interested in education. Um, I'm also interested in ACS and minimally invasive surgery. I'm not necessarily like narrowing down on anything yet. And I don't know if I'm going to specialize, especially being part of the rural track. Um, but I'm also interested to see with whatever community I end up in, what the needs are there and then kind of work from that. Um, but I mean, one of the recent rabbit holes that I've kind of go, gone down was also direct peritoneal resuscitation. So um, that I know is something that is um, being uh, researched here at Regions and um, I think would be also applicable in rural communities as well. And then why I ended up back here, Minnesota is my home. Um, it's, it's where I've always pictured myself ending up no matter how, where I've gone, no matter where I've lived, Minnesota's home for me. So I'm really happy that I get to be back here and that I'm a part of a program that actually um, is going to help me to help the community that I love so much. And then last but not least, hobbies. So with living abroad, obviously um, I like to travel. So I've traveled a bunch of places. I like to continue to do that. And then hobbies that I'm still currently kind of involved in, um, one of them is probably annoying my husband. Uh, <laughs> I also still train jujitsu. That's me throwing him there. Um, <laughs> I enjoy baking. That's my little sister there. Uh, I recently got into embroidery as well. And then um, I've kept doing, so in Denmark, I got into like sauna and uh, cold plunge and all that. And so I'm still doing that here at Embrace North. And uh, I like to go skiing as well. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. Hopefully that wasn't too long and uh, yeah, thanks.